Warner Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Betty Grable and Victor Mature in Wabash Avenue. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. It's an unfortunate fact that occasionally we can't stop the wheels of progress. Because although we enjoy the luxury of modern invention, sometimes we long for the good old days. Uh, one way to solve this serious problem is by turning back the hands of time. Now, uh, you might find this a little difficult, but not on the Lux Radio Theater. We'll just present the nostalgic musical from 20th Century Fox, which takes us back to the turn of the century and Wabash Avenue. As our stars, we have that wonderful combination from the original cast. Betty Grable and Victor Mature, who will bring to life the colorful world of a honky-tonk on Chicago's Wabash Avenue. And today, on any avenue, you see our modern girls with their lovely Lux complexions, which goes to prove that the modern miss has the advantage after all. She can depend on Lux toilet soap for her beauty care. The curtain rises on Wabash Avenue, starring Betty Grable as Ruby Summers and Victor Mature as Andy Clark. Chicago, the 1890s. In a boisterous, brawling section of town known as Wabash Avenue, one of the most popular spots is Mike Stanley's Cafe. In his office, Mike Stanley has a visitor. Andy! Andy Clark! Well, come in, pal. Sit down. How are you, Mike? Hi, <laughs> Mike. Just as pretty as ever. Only, uh, tell me something, Dimples. How come you're so nervous all of a sudden? Uh, uh, nervous? Ner who's nervous? Well, the bouncer out there frisked me for a gun before he let me come in. Oh, I told him you were a friend of mine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, did he find the gun? Would you like to frisk me yourself? Andy, boy, is that any way to talk to me? You know, pal, the last I heard of you, you were playing piano for the Merrily Sisters? Yeah, they fired me. They got a piano you put nickels into instead. <laughs> yeah, it's a mechanical age, all right. So I figured I'd uh, come to Chicago, Mike, try to run you down. Turn out to be a cinch. Pretty popular place you got here. Well, let's go and have a drink. I already had one, Mike, with English Eddie. English Eddie? You better look in your pocket. He probably picked it. Oh, we wouldn't have found much. I'm broke. Oh, got any prospects? Just one. This. A deck of cards. A deck of cards. I tell you what, pal. If I hear of anybody looking for a poker dealer, Remember I... Remember this deck, Mike. It's yours. Mine? Been a long time since we played cards. <laughs> Not since you and me were partners in that two-bit carnival. <laughs> yeah. And remember that uh, hotel you lived in? Oh, there was some hotel. They never cleaned anything. Oh, you're so right, Curly. That's how I happened to find these cards. Under the cushion of your chair. <laughs> <laughs> a deck of cards with seven aces. You weren't taking any chances, were you, Curly? Oh, now, Andrew. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't accuse me of cheating a pal. Oh, oh perish the thought, Michael. Well, it was winner take all, and you lost. I was at the slight disadvantage. You forgot to tell me about the seven aces. Yeah, but when you find cards under a cushion, you gotta find them the same night. <laughs> That's the etiquette of the game, pal. Besides, I think you're imagining things. Yeah. Right now, I'm imagining uh, how we can improve this joint. I ain't interested. A fella can get hurt trying to move in on my place. Our place, pal. Our place. You know, I'm still your partner. That means I own half your stake. You own nothing. Now, take my advice and forget it. But I couldn't possibly forget it, Mike. Why, I'd be a sucker to forget it. I'd lose my self-respect. And without my self-respect, well, I'd... Uh, oh, Mike, I was just say... wondering if you... Oh... I didn't know you had company. Oh, that's all right, honey. He's leaving now. Uh, uh, so long, Andy. My name's uh, Andy Clark. How do you do? So long, Andy. What's yours? She ain't got none. That's the door over there, pal. The thing with the knob on it. But I know your name. Ruby. Ruby Summers. Yeah, I saw you outside on the poster. And what a costume you were wearing. Oh, now, wait a minute. I designed that costume myself. That explains it. What's wrong with it, Mr. Clark? Well... <laughs> It's a question of taste, Miss Summers. And taste is something that either you have or you don't have. Now, uh, take that horror you're wearing now. Horror? 
Why, you overgrown wiseacre? Who makes your clothes or do you grow them yourself? Look, lady, I wouldn't criticize, but I happen to have a half interest in you. You've got a what in who? I'm Mike's a partner. I quit. Oh, now, honey, honey, take it easy. He's got nothing to do with this place. Andy, you shouldn't ought to talk to her that way. Miss Summers picked out that dress personally. Oh, I'm so sorry. But uh, when you pick out your new wardrobe, Miss Summers, I suggest you let me select it. I'm afraid you're not properly qualified. <laughs> You missed him, honey, but it was a good try. How did he get in here? And what was that yammer about a half interest in me? Why, if I didn't have to do a number, I'd... I'd... Oh, what am I knocking myself out for? Yeah. Why should we let him bother us, huh? After all, honey, you got me. Big, rich, and beautiful. <laughs> and I'm all yours for the asking. Shall we have supper later, Uncle Mike? There you go again. Uncle Mike. Uncle... What is this Uncle Mike business? Every time I make a pitch, I wind up being a relative. I'd still like to have supper with you. Okay. After the floor show, we'll go to the Sherman house. Thanks, Uncle Mike. Yeah, yeah. Go on, do your number. Uncle Mike, yes. I never get a chance at romance. The boys all want to date my sister Kate. Katie never read a book, and she never learned to cook. But she's always got a string of fish upon her hook. When she's around, the boys all pass me by. And then last night I learned the reason why. I went to a dance with my sister Kate. I'm telling you, she was really great. I didn't have to wait all night till I began to see the light. Kate did a dance that was something new. She shook her shoulders and then I knew why all the boys are going wild over Sister Katie's style. I wish that I could shimmy like my sister Kate. She shimmies like the jelly on a plate. My mammy wanted to know last night why all the boys treat Sister Kate so right. Every boy in our neighborhood knows that she can shimmy and she shimmies good. I may be late, but I'll be right up to date when I can shimmy like my sister Kate. Uh huh. Shimmy like my sister Kate. Encore, Miss Summers? Get out of my way, you tin horn chiseler. Now, look, if you had class, if you sang a song instead I of shouting that you would get be... get out of my way. You, you take a thoroughbred filly, hitch her up to a milk wagon, and what have you got? Just the plug. I'll murder you. I'll tear you to pieces. I'll... Look, a little later, I'll... Miss Summers. Right now, English Eddie's waiting for me at the bar. So long. Well, Andy, you don't have to tell me how Mike welcomed you. I can guess. Look, Mike and I are like brothers, Eddie. <laughs> By the way, you see this ring? Uh-huh. How much dough could you get for it? A uh, diamond, huh? Well, if I'm lucky, 300 maybe. Mm. Well, see that you're lucky, huh? What's the 300 for? We're going to water it, Eddie, and watch it grow. A little poker game with Mike Stanley. Poker? Oh, don't you know when to stop playing poker with Mike? Look, he took the carnival away from me with seven aces. That was crude, Eddie. Real crude. Just get me that 300 bucks and watch me go to work. <laughs> Well, I don't understand it, Annie. You couldn't have lost. By well, the way you were cheating, it was impossible to lose. <laughs> impossible, Eddie, but I'm practically broke again. You know, Mike's learned too many card tricks since I saw him last. Why, he's even a bigger crook than I gave him credit for. Well, I tried, Eddie. Well, and now what? Get a job. Who do I know in this town? Uh, nobody who can give you a job. Well, let's see. There's the uh, Spieler and Gillis, Harrigan. And, Harrigan? Uh, is Harrigan in Chicago? Yes, what could that old drunk do for you? Oh, nothing. I'd just like to see him. He's a great old guy, that's all. Uh, well, watch your step at the gutters. You might stumble over him. Poor old Harrigan. Look, you know he wants... You know what he... Hey. Hey. What's going on down there? Oh, just the Women's Reform Committee. Reform? They're out every night trying to clean up the town. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I want to hear what's going on. In the city of Chicago today, there's one church for every 2,000 inhabitants, but there
there's one saloon for every 200. I tell you, if the men won't do anything about it, then the women must. Fair enough. You know something, Eddie? These good people should be encouraged. Encouraged? You party? Look, I've got a little score to settle with Mike Stanley, and they've just given me an idea. Now, first, we'll need a couple of girls. A girls? Well, that's something else again. Look, I'll need two girls to go to work tomorrow night at 8.30. Now, here's exactly what I've got in mind. Mike, Mike, look, he's back again tonight. Your pal, Andy Clark. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, honey. Just go out and do your number. Mike, who's that with him? Huh? Oh, looks like English Eddie. I mean the girls. Oh, now, baby, you know I don't even look at any other girls. They're cooking up something, Mike. I can smell it from here. Come on, honey, relax. I took care of Andy Clark last night. Hey, come on, you got that Apple number coming up. Oh, yeah, my Apple number. Well, Mike. Huh? Mike, would you mind if just a tomato happened to be in my basket of apples? Just <laughs> one tomato? Yeah, I see what you mean. I'll even get one for you. A nice, fat, ripe tomato. Now you're sure you know what to do, girls. You got everything clear. Andy, you and Eddie been rehearsing us all afternoon. Jenny? Don't worry, Andy. It's a cinch. Now, what about the reformers, Eddie? Just down the street. About a hundred of them. So, what are we waiting for? Good. Nothing, I guess. Only, uh, I'd sort of like to hear Miss Summers sing. You know, it may be the last time we'll have that pleasure for quite a while. <laughs> Big red rosy apple. Hey there, big boy, how's about a bite? May I tempt you with a big red rosy apple? Let me be your pippin' for tonight. I'll be true, I'll never be misleading. We can be like Adam and Eve walking in the Garden of Eden. May I tempt you with a big red rosy apple? Cause you're the apple of my eye, oh my. You're the apple of my eye. Let me be your pippin' for tonight. I'll be true, I'll never be misleading. We can be like Adam and Eve walking in the Garden of Eden. May I tempt you with a big red rosy apple? Cause you're the apple of my eye. You're the apple of my eye. I didn't miss Summers. All right, catch. Oh. <laughs> look at me, look at me. Sorry, Eddie, but it could have been a watermelon. Now, look, all set, girls? Sure, yeah, yeah. Now, Kent, count 20, then mush yourselves up and come out on the street. Let's go, Eddie. I tell you, it's a foul stain on the fair face of Chicago. And we women intend to do something about it. Do you realize that... You thieves, you robbers! What happened, lady? They threw me out of the saloon, no. you dirty dog. Well, I'd eaten like woman. I wouldn't have been in there in the first place. What else could I do? My husband's in there losing his hard-earned wages at the crooked gambling case. Gee, lady, that's terrible. I don't care about myself. It's my two little babies praying that daddy will bring home some bread. Did you hear that, folks? It's a crime. A life being ruined under our very noses. Well, what are we going to do about it? Make sure they can't get away with it. You're right, stranger. Let's go in and clean it out. Right. Well, that's violence, gentlemen. The very sort of violence that we're opposed to. How long are you ladies going to wait? I won't do it. I won't. You can't make me. Look, they just thrown out another lady. What's the matter, miss? Oh, I'm so ashamed. So ashamed. Ashamed of what, little lady? Oh, sir. I'm one of the chorus girls in there. Oh, I know it sounds horrible, but I'm only doing it to send my little brother through college. Did you hear that, folks? I'm really a nice girl. Of course you are. I want to be a nice girl. Oh, why won't they let me? Why? This is an outrage. I say let's wreck the place. What is your answer, citizen? Yes. Yes. Then follow me. You 
can't hurt that old Irishman. That's it, ladies. Tear the place apart. Just look around it. Oh, 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 a shambles. And you should have seen Harrigan. He threw a case of beer right through Mike's imported mirror. Yeah, I know, I know. Then Mike pushed him down. He hit his head, Andy. You mean you mean he's really hurt? Where is he? I just carried him around back. He's unconscious. Unconscious? What? He's moving. Andy, look, he's moving. When I recite smiling. Harrigan. Sure, it's like a Harrigan, are you all right? morning spring. Harrigan, your head. Uh, the dam's burst, lads. Run for your life. Harrigan. Smiling, the boy fell dead. He's dead, all right. Dead drunk. Come on, Eddie. We'll take him to my rooming house and get a doctor. <laughs> still say you can't get away with it, but Andy. it's the best idea I ever had. You heard what the doctor said. Outside of a hangover, Harrigan will be fine. Not so loud. Look, now look. All we have to do is get Harrigan out of town. Then we'll tell Mike that Harrigan died. He hit his head when Mike pushed him and died. Irish oh, there he goes again. Go downstairs and get a carriage. Sure, it's Harrigan. like a morning Harrigan. spring. It's me, Harrigan, your pal, yes. Andy Clark. Uh-huh. Where am I, like? You're in my bed. You've been here for hours and hours. Oh, it's terrible, Harrigan. The doctor's just left. Doctors? Who's sick? You are. But you're going to be well again. Only you've got to do just like the doctor said. Oh, I'll never take another drop, never. Not only that. Not only that, you've got to leave town. Just for a few weeks, old pal. A different climate, they said. And don't worry about money. A few weeks in New York and you'll be a new man. I don't want to be a new man. I like me fine the way I was. It's your only chance, Harrigan. Oh, water, water. New Yorker. Oh, well, maybe a change of saloons is just what I need. When Irish eyes are smiling. And that's why you haven't seen us around for a couple of days, Mike. Poor old Harrigan. Mike, what's he talking about? Poor old Harrigan. You mean you haven't heard, Miss Summer? What do you think I'm asking questions for? We... Uh... We buried him yesterday, Miss Summers. That is, we uh, oh. shipped the remains to New York. Oh, no. That nice old man. Harrigan. What a great old guy. Yeah, it's too bad it wasn't somebody else. Uh, no offense, Mike. Can't you even let him alone in his grief? His, uh, his heart, Andy. His head, pal. Concussion. But you've got troubles of your own, haven't you? That reformer group really wrecked this place, didn't they? Yeah. Well, we'll be back in business in two weeks, won't we, Mike? Yes, maybe we will. He's starting that wee routine again. Well, I've had all of him I can take in one morning. See you later, yeah. Mike. Now, the coroner's report on Harrigan was very interesting. It, uh, it, it was? Pal, you look worried. Oh, I shouldn't bother you about Harrigan when your saloon's just been wrecked. Yeah. But look, pal, why even try to reopen? I guess I just love money. <laughs> then why don't we go to the World's Fair? Open up a place on the Midway. We can star Ruby, and with me coaching her, we can have wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, there we, there's that wee business again. Well, we're partners, aren't we? Is that all you can talk about? That and the coroner's inquest. Yeah, uh, the... The what? <laughs> you know what the cops think, Mike? They think Harrigan hit his head on the curb. Well, well, didn't he? Mike. <laughs> Mike, this is Andy, your old friend. I was right there when it happened. Well, then you know I only pushed him in, in, in self-defense. Well, the worst you could get is a charge of manslaughter. Man, uh, well, why should the case even come up? You said yourself that the cops... Well, well the cops will still be thinking that if, uh... Andy, if, uh, Andy, if what? If, uh, we're partners, partner. Oh. Well, you win, pal. I, uh, I better go and tell Ruby. Oh, leave Ruby to me. When the time comes, I'll tell her. Tell me what? Uh, uh, I, I'll be right with you, honey. I said tell me what? All about my legacy, Miss Summers, from old man Harrigan. Be seeing you, Curly. <laughs> Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter, is waiting now to bring us the Lux Radio Theater's movie news of the week. And delightful news it is, John, for everyone who enjoys sparkling, light-hearted comedy. 20th Century Fox has produced one of the merriest movies of the season in The Jackpot. Take an average American family with Jimmy Stewart and Barbara Hale as the parents of two young children and let them win a radio quiz contest. Truckloads of fabulous prizes to send on the startled pair. 
a Shetland pony, a swimming pool, and a three-year supply of frozen food, to mention just a few. <laughs> Jimmy, as the unlucky recipient, finds he has to reckon with the tax collectors. And not only that, but his home life is disrupted besides. Sounds like a wonderful setup for laughs, Lydia. Oh, it is. The jackpot is full of them. The plot thickens when Barbara Hale suspects her husband of falling in love with a pretty artist. As if the poor girl wasn't already confused enough trying to fit all those fantastic prizes into her home. No, if they'd only send her something a woman would want, like a, a case of Lux toilet soap. Yes, John. Any housewife would consider that a real prize. Especially if it was Lux soap in the luxurious new bath size. I know Barbara has Lux toilet soap in her own home. She uses it for a lovely complexion and for her beauty bath, too. Screen stars are delighted with that satin smooth bath cake. It gives such rich, abundant lather, even in hardest water. Active lather that leaves you feeling so refreshed. And the perfume, John. Women love the delicate fragrance a Lux soap beauty bath leaves on the skin. It's an exclusive perfume, of course. A combination of many costly flower fragrances. If you haven't tried Lux Toilet Soap in the generous new bath size, be sure to put it on your shopping list now. Enjoy the creamy lather, the delightful clinging fragrance of this luxurious bath soap. Remember, nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Act two of Wabash Avenue, starring Betty Grable as Ruby and Victor Mature as Andy. <laughs> old Irishman named Harrigan is in New York, doing his utmost to absorb the city's whiskey supply. But back in Chicago, Mike Stanley believes that Harrigan is dead. He's accepted Andy's proposition and opened a cabaret at the World's Fair, where Ruby Summers is now trying to rehearse a number. Baby, won't you say you, you love me? Till you do, I can't feel right. Hey, you! You at the piano! Fish face! <laughs> yes, Miss Summers? I don't like the way you murder that piano. And whatever the joke is, I don't like that either. You can go now. Look, you forget that I'm staging this number and about your singing, Miss Summers. If you'll just slow it down a little and try to remember you're not on Wabash Avenue, maybe it'll sound like a ballad. And now I'll tell you something, Uncle Hiram. I don't take orders from chiseling card mechanics and horse blanket suits who think they're great hot shots without having two bits worth of brains, with nothing, in fact, but a ballooned-up golf, the nerve of a pickpocket, plus the manners of a mutt and the heart of a louse, you big baboon. <laughs> not that. I sound like a zoo. Mike! Mike! Where's Mike Stanley? I tell you, I'm through. I won't take it anymore. Mike! Ah, but honey, what's wrong? What's eating you? For the last time, Mike, if you don't throw him out of here, I quit. Quit, huh? Yeah. Go ahead. Leave me. I... I'm not worth it, honey. Mike, what kind of an act is this? I don't get it. I'm a beaten man, honey. I... I used to look up to myself. I... I was a man I was proud of. Oh, you're talking like a man who's lost his marbles. I have. It's Harrigan. I never knew you were that fond of Harrigan. I wasn't. Only I, I didn't didn't mean to kill him. Kill him? Who says you killed him? I ought to know if I bumped someone off or not. Oh, it was an accident, baby. I pushed him while those dames were raiding our old joint. Andy says he'll tell the cops if I didn't make him a partner. Oh, I knew that guy was a snake the minute I laid eyes on him. Oh, but honey, he's a great showman. He's he's great on numbers. Do me a favor. Let him rehearse you, huh? For my sake. All right, Uncle Mike. For your sake. Oh, thanks, honey. <laughs> be my dressing room, Mr. Clark. So just drag your big feet out of here Look, before I... Look, will you I... please listen to me for just one minute? We're through rehearsing. This is opening night. In five minutes, you're supposed to go out on stage and... and... Holy Toledo, that dress. Feathers again. Are you leaving or not? Not until those feathers come off. Oh, my feathers! Mike, he's pulling off my feathers! Mike's out front. He can't hear you. They're real mm. ostrich, and this dress cost me a fortune. I... Do you want to oh. sing or do you want to fly? Ostrich, huh? Oh. There's a rooster in town who's going to resent that. Oh, my feathers. My beautiful feathers. I'll kill Easy, you. baby. I'll e kill easy you. Easy now. Uh, let go of me. Let sure, go of sure. me. Sure, Just as soon as you calm down. Now, oh. calm. Maybe a kiss will quiet your nerves a little. What did you... What did you have to do that for? You kiss me as much as I kissed you. What's your idea? <laughs> you enjoy slapping me, don't you? 
If you so much as touch me again, I'll blow your head off. And if I hang for it, I'll hang happy. You know, I wonder if you'll ever admit it when you find out you're wrong. Now, fix your makeup up and get up on stage. Hey, maestro. Orchestra ready? All ready, Andy. Tell the piano player I'm taking his place. You? That's right. Just for Ruby's number. You're the leader, but take the tempo from me. Whatever you say, Andy. They're still applauding. Ah, uh, honey, you're sensational. Oh, Mr. Clark, Mr. Clark. Well? About my number just now. I mean, after all I said, well, I I just wanted to thank you. Glad you feel that way. Excuse me, I'm busy. Well, what's eating him? I'll let him throw you, honey. Hey, Andy, you got a minute? Let's step into the office. Now, listen, chump. I don't want nobody around that ain't going to be nice to Ruby. Why not? Because I'm going to marry her, see? Has Ruby accepted you? Accepted me? You better get some sleep, kid. Every girl has been trying to get me to accept them since I was that high. I'm a catch, Andrew, a big catch. <laughs> sure you are, Dimples, and uh, I think Ruby's a very lucky girl. And I want you to know that I really mean it. Ain't you getting revoltingly friendly all of a sudden? Now, look. <laughs> Look, we've cut up quite a few rough touches together, sure. But when it comes to marriage between you and Ruby, all bets are off. Why even have a present for you? Like a pint of arsenic, maybe? Pal. Pal, I'm clearing out. And not only that, you can have my half of the business free. Yeah? What's the angle? No angle at all. Look, supposing Ruby and I were getting married, you'd do the same for me, wouldn't you? Uh, well, I guess I would. Sure you would. Yeah. Uh, Gee, Andy, not many clip artists got that much sentiment. You know, the trouble with you, Michael, you've been a phony for so long, you don't know a real friend when you see one. Yeah, well, if you don't stop being my best friend, I'm going to get sick to my stomach. <laughs> when are you leaving? Maybe tonight. Yeah, right after I congratulate Ruby. Oh, no, next, next. I haven't finished making the pitch. I'm going to give her the ring tonight. Well, in that case, I'll uh, take you both out for supper. Yeah, that swell place just off the midway. Oh, no, Andy, no. Oh, the least you could do is let me take you two out for supper. Well, 
Well, okay, I guess. Only who's going to pay for it? Gee, champagne and everything. Some supper, huh, Sonny? I don't get it. All this sudden good cheer between you. Well, two. Mike and I have a couple of good reasons to be happy. That's all, Ruby. Yeah? When does the blood start running in the street? No, seriously. For one, Oscar Hammerstein was in our place tonight listening to you sing. I'm Joe. I'm Jack. I'm Mo. I'm Mac. I'm Lou. How'd you do? You really needn't tell me who is who. You can bet your boots that I remember you. I remember you. Wasn't you the fellow with the open umbrella that I met one rainy day upon the avenue? I remember you. Yes, indeed I do. Gee, I'm awful glad I met you, bet your life I won't forget you, I'll remember you. Pretty lady, won't you kindly tell us who? Yes, who will be the lucky one to take you walking down the avenue? This is all so unexpected, though my bow has been selected. I'll remember you. You're Joe, you're Jack, you're Mo, you're Mac. I'm Lou. I knew. But as for walking down the avenue, it's Toodaloo and 23 Skidoo. For when I walk, I always walk with Billy, cause Billy knows just how to walk. And when I talk, I always talk with Billy, cause Billy knows just how to talk. And when I dine, I always dine with Billy. He takes me where I get my fill. And when I dream, and when I dream, I always dream of Bill. Oh, when I walk, 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 I like to take a little walk with Billy. For Billy knows the best destination. And when I talk, I like to have a little chat with Billy. Poor Billy knows how to hold a girl and hold a conversation. When we dance, 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 we go completely willy-nilly. So Billy has a style that's all his own. And when I dream... Yes, 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 yes. And when I dream... Yes, 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 yes. can now, Eddie. Ruby will be waiting for me in her dressing room. And if you're going to be best yeah, friend, you better hurry up. Andy, disaster. Talk sense. What happened? Harrigan. He's back, Andy. Harrigan. Yeah, I just saw him out there in the midway. And if Mike should see him... I... Don't say it, Eddie. Don't say it. Come on, quick. We've got to find Well, I'd say it again, Mike. Where is he? Where is me dear friend Andy? Harrigan. But you're dead, Harrigan. Go away. Now, that's the fifth time you've mentioned that. And I don't mind telling you I'm getting a bit weary of the words. Yeah, but I know you're dead. You've been dead for weeks. They sent the remains to New York. Well, that accounts for the way I feel. <laughs> now, where is he? Oh, where's Andy? Andy and Eddie. Harrigan. Harrigan, you're not a ghost. You're alive. I am. Oh, you're the most beautiful stiff I ever saw. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Harrigan, park the cops. Now, where have you been? You're being very polite to an old bum, but I don't forget, Michael Stanley, that you give me a punch in the snoot back there in Wabash Avenue. Oh, but I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> it was an accident, Harrigan. I'm a nice guy. I'm an awful nice guy. Uh, a nice guy would offer me a drink. I got a half a cellar full of Irish whiskey. Only first you got to tell me, what happened? Well, Mike, it seems my health was failing, and Andy, the dear lad, figured that if I went to New York... Keep on going, Harrigan. Tell me that beautiful story. <laughs> to disturb you in your dressing room, Miss Summers, but I'm looking for Mr. Clark. Well, so am I. I've been looking for him for over an hour. Oh, but he'll be back. I'm sure he's just looking for a minister. You're not the minister. Oh, no, Miss Summers. My name's Carter from the Southern Illinois Bank. Perhaps you'll give Mr. Clark a message for me? From the bank, you said? Yes. 
He'll be glad to know we've decided to loan him the $20,000. 20000 For his new cabaret. You, uh, you know about his new venture. Well, no, I, I... Oh, dear, I hope I haven't spoiled a surprise. Oh, no, no, I... Well, I think it's wonderful. It's just that he didn't tell me. I might add, Miss Summers, that the bank considers your reputation a little better security than Mr. Clark. Well, that's very nice, but why me? Why, with you as the stellar attraction of the cabaret. Well, that's very flattering, but I've just signed a contract with Mr. Hammerstein to go to New York. You mean you won't be appearing at Mr. Clark's cafe? Uh, well, no, I, no, I can't. But only today he told us that you and he were about to get married and that you were canceling all other engagements. Oh, he did, did he? Otherwise, the bank never would have... Well, I must say I'm very grateful for this little talk, Miss Summers. Yes. Yes, so am I. Well, uh, here he comes now. Uh, good evening, Mr. Clark. Huh? Oh, good evening. Hiya, sweetie. Where have you been, Andy? Oh, just trying to clear up a few things here. Railroad tickets, and we'll be in New York on the 10th. Isn't that wonderful? Is it? Andy, what were you planning to do after we get to New York? Oh, something will pop up, I guess. How about that cabaret you were going to open? Well, that went out the minute you signed with Hammerstein. You see, I, uh... How did you know about that? Was I going to sing in it? Sure, but now that you're singing for Hammerstein... Are you sure I am? Of course. Why shouldn't you? Because that Mr. Carter just said I wasn't. Carter? You guaranteed my appearance to get the bank to lend you the money. I guarantee... What were you going to do, Andy? Talk me out of going to New York? Look, I don't get this. I'm not trying to talk you out of anything. I don't even know who Carter is. Ruby, you don't believe this nonsense. What do you expect me to believe? That I'm marrying you because I love you and for no other reason. That's a lot to ask with your record, isn't it? Ruby, somebody's been selling you a lot of lies and I can prove it. Go ahead. But it better be good. Well, all I have to do is... No. No, I don't think I will. This is something that our whole future is based on. You don't think I'd pull a cheap trick like that on you, do you? You haven't told me any different, Andy. You don't trust me, is that it? Then there's no point in going on any further. Look, I'll admit my record hasn't been too good up until now, but up until now, I wasn't going to marry you. Is that all you're going to say? Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Someday you'll find out I'm not lying to you. Come on in, Andy. <laughs> I figured you'd be dropping by the office. Just stand up, Dimples. I'm going to smear that nose of yours all over your face. Of all the dirty, low-down That's tricks, have some mistake, Yeah, yeah. mistake, you. A <laughs> couple of the boys here are figuring out changing the shape of your charming noggin. I am, uh, Mr. Clark. Should we frisk <laughs> him, boss? No, no, no. He knows when he's licked, right, pal? Just like poker, huh? You had a full house, queen high. But you lost the queen, Sharpie. And guess what I got? Two jokers. <laughs> One named Harrigan... And another named Carter. All right, Mike. You win. You're leaving town tonight, see? And the boys here are just going to make sure you do. Okay. Just give Harrigan a break, will you? It wasn't his fault. Harrigan I like. You? I hope I never see you again sometime. <laughs> so long, handsome. So long, Uncle Mike. And keep off those Ferris wheels. <laughs> In just a few moments, we'll bring you the third act of Wabash Avenue. I've invited as our guest tonight Miss Sheila Stevens, one of our young stage and screen actresses who, in private life, answers to the name of Mrs. Gordon McRae. Sheila, I think our audience would like to hear what it's like to be married to a popular movie star and yet have a career all your own. It seems quite natural to me, Mr. Keeley. Of course, Gordon and I met and married before either of us came to Hollywood. We both worked in stock. Often, we didn't even get paid. Well, uh, you've had quite a bit of experience in radio acting, too, haven't you? Yes. However, this is my first appearance on the Lux Radio Theater. But I listen every week. And last Monday, I was simply thrilled with your production of Rebecca. Then you'll be interested to know that David O. Selznick is going to re-release Rebecca in several key cities. I hope Hollywood's one of them. I thought Joan Fontaine and Laurence Olivier were wonderful in the picture. Yes, Daphne du Maurier's great story has become a classic on the screen. David O. Selznick created a tense, exciting melodrama with a perfect cast. You can't ask for a better movie fare than that. Yes, how vividly Joan Fontaine makes you feel the predicament of that young wife. Yes, from an uncertain, frightened young girl, you see her transformed into a poised and radiant beauty. Yes, indeed. Joan Fontaine has such exquisite loveliness. She's a true blonde, Mr. Kennedy, with delicate, fair skin. And you have to be careful of a complexion like that. 
so naturally she depends on Lux Soap Beauty Care. Like so many other famous stars in Hollywood. That's because Lux Soap is so gentle. Gives million-dollar complexions protecting care they need. That's right, Mr. Kennedy. You know, I found Lux Soap gives my skin such a soft, smooth look. It's wonderful to have a beauty care that's so quick and easy, too. Thank you, Mrs. Gordon McRae, and all our wishes for your success. <laughs> Smart women everywhere find Lux Soap facials give skin quick new loveliness. Keep it fresh and radiant. Active lather does the trick. Ensures gentle, thorough care. If you haven't tried these daily active lather facials, why not get some Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow? Remember, nine out of ten famous screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap regularly. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. And WDAN, the commercial news station in Danville, Illinois. The curtain rises on Act Three of Wabash Avenue, starring Betty Grable as Ruby and Victor Mature as Andy. Well, it's several weeks later, and Ruby Summers and Andy Clark are both in New York. Only Ruby's uptown, a new star on Broadway. And Andy's down in the Bowery, where he and Eddie have opened up a little music hall. Oh, look, old boy, ever since we opened up this place, you've been moping. What do you say we take the night off? Night off? Why? Well, we could go uptown and see the show. What show? The one you've been reading about. Ruby Summers opening tonight in New Hammerstein Review. <laughs> it's a good idea, Eddie. But we couldn't possibly get tickets. Oh, really? Well, it's been months since I've picked a pocket, but I'll show you just how easy it is. I just reach in your coat and presto, two beautiful tickets right in the second row. <laughs> you win, Eddie. Let's go. English Eddie. Glad to see you, pal. I didn't know you were in town. Oh, yes, we've got us a little place. Yeah, we? we were just passing through to see the show. Oh, uh, yes, just passing through. Well, Ruby's got a great hit, huh? Oh, it's all Ruby's. The whole show, they're crazy about her, Andy. Yeah. Anything uh, new between you and Ruby? Oh, no, nothing definite, not yet. Well, we've been busy, you know, a lot of detail work, putting the show together and everything. Oh, sure, sure. You, uh, you ain't been backstage to say hello to her or anything. Me? Oh, I know. I hadn't even thought of it. Oh, uh, but now that you ask... I didn't ask. Well, in that case, I think I will. After the show, maybe. So yeah, on. yeah. Well, excuse me, fellas. I gotta hear what them critics are talking about. Who is it? Me, honey. Come in, Mike. Oh, hi, you beautiful. Hi. You should hear them critics in the lobby, Ruby. They're raving. They love you. They're crazy about the show. And just think the second act is even better. Oh, I'm glad, Mike. And it's all you're doing. Oh, it's just that we're a lucky combination, honey. We belong together. 
Ah, oh, this thing is perfect. Gee, you smell good. There's something on your mind, isn't there? I'll say there is, Ruby. Look, honey, let's make it a permanent combination, huh? I haven't asked you once, not since Chicago, but now everything's going great, and you can see that we're meant to be together, and... and... Oh, will you, honey? I'm sorry, Uncle Mike. Still a relative, huh? There's no use kidding you or myself. I'm in love, Mike, with a cheap, conniving skunk. But I wouldn't marry him if he came crawling on his hands and knees. Gee, that's a tough spot, huh? I can't help it. I, I guess I'm hoping someday the right guy will come along and kick him right out of my system. And I ain't the right guy. Sorry. I guess you can't help that either. Hey, you know, I know that knock. It's the skunk. <laughs> you want to see him? Sure. Sure, tell him to come in. A skunk can't really hurt you, just humiliate you. Only when he's cornered. Say, you look wonderful, Ruby. Thanks. You're looking pretty chipper yourself. How are you doing? Oh, great. I've got a big deal on in Atlantic City. Yeah, he's just passing through. Leaving tonight. I just thought I'd uh, drop by and tell you how much I'm enjoying the show. The numbers are really great. I couldn't have done better myself. Hmm, coming from you, that's quite a compliment. Thanks. Well, just one skunk's opinion. Hey, hey, speaking of skunks, <laughs> you remember that time we split up and you put that skunk in my sideshow? <laughs> <laughs> that show was so bad it took the customers four minutes to get wind of it. Yeah. <laughs> the way you... The way you two double-cross each other and then we'll laugh about it beats me. Oh, Ruby. Ruby, that's nothing. We've pulled some buttes on each other. <laughs> How about that time when the reformers wrecked your joint and I sent that phony insurance man over to see you? <laughs> oh, that was a killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I still say the best one of the bunch was the day you and Ruby are going to get married. <laughs> this is your wedding day, and I send that fake bank manager, Mr. Carter, to call on Ruby. You remember that one? Yeah. That was really a pip, Mike. <laughs> Yeah. But the beautiful part of it is she... She believed it. She went for it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for trying, Curly, but you're a little too late. Five minutes, Miss Summers. Second act. I'll be ready. Andy. Andy, wait. Bye, Ruby. Lots of luck. Mike. I wasn't kidding, Ruby. That bank guy was strictly a phony. I bet you hate me now. You... Hey, hey, you kissed me. Oh, my, thanks. Thanks for telling me. Right this way, folks, for the greatest little show on the barry. This is it, folks, and this barry music hall. And the performance has just begun. All right, lady, you want to buy a ticket? That'll be exact. Why, Ruby. Ruby Summers. Hello, Eddie. Ruby. Hi. I guess you want to see Andy, huh? Yes, Eddie. I guess I do. He's, uh, he's playing the piano, Ruby. You see, the show's on, but maybe if I... The show's on? What's the next act, Eddie? Well, uh, her name is Beulah Blake. She sings. At least that's what it says on the program. But why would you... Oh, look, I'll get Andy. No, no, wait. For a change, I've got an idea. Now, if you can get me backstage, Eddie... Backstage? Yes. Only wait for Mike. He's paying the cab driver. Over here, Mike. Our next attraction, the Philadelphia songbird, Miss Beulah Blake, singing Honey Man, yours truly at the piano. Just a minute, Andy, hold everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just received a very special request to sing a different number, a little ballad entitled, Baby Won't You Say You Love Me. How about it, Andy? You know that too? Yeah, sure, but... Oh, then let's get Professor? Wonder if you care, wonder if you miss me, how am I to know, unless you tell? Hey, we don't want to hear her, we just want to see her. But 
on your spotlight. that you love me. I promise not There she is, Eddie. Well, I hope she's that satisfied. And, 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 uh, look at him, Mike. Tomorrow. So tell me one thing. So tell me what Ruby sees in a mug like him when she could have a mug like ah, me. Shut up, Uncle Mike. The lady's seen. me part of everything I'll ever do. To cry as much, to laugh as much, and love me even half as much. Goodbye to Wabash Avenue, and here are the stars who brought back the good old days, Betty Gravel and Victor Mature. Betty, I noticed that in your latest picture, My Blue Heaven, you wear modern clothes for the first time in years. Yes, 20th Century Fox is finally allowing me to take off the stays and breathe like anyone else. Ah, <laughs> but I saw the picture, and they're still allowing you to show those beautiful legs. And Betty, you must admit those legs are exceptional. Oh, I don't know. Next to my daughters, Vicky and Jessica, I think Sociable has the prettiest legs I've ever seen. Who is Sociable? Sociable is the name of my favorite horse, and he has beautiful legs. Uh, but uh, he doesn't have a complexion like yours. Uh, that's because Betty is one of our loveliest Lux girls. Well, I'm a Lux girl, all right, Bill. It's been my favorite complexion care for years. Vic, you know, you and Betty haven't been teamed together here in some time. It was great seeing you again. Those are kind words, Bill. Incidentally, I saw you at the Chinese Theater last Thursday night. That's right, at the Invitational Hollywood premiere of Darrell F. Zanuck's production, All About Eve. It was a brilliant premiere for a brilliant picture. It certainly was. And uh, how about the Lux Radio Theater? What are you uh, premiering next week, Bill? Well, Vic, we thought we'd just keep on in this happy mood, so next week we're presenting another comedy, a modern love story from the Warner Brothers Studios. It's Pretty Baby. And as our stars... We'll have two from the original cast, Dennis Morgan and Betsy Drake. Be sure you don't miss it. Sounds wonderful, Bill. Good night. Good night. Good night, and a good time was had by all. <laughs> <laughs>